Hey everyone, and welcome back to the React for Beginners series. In this episode, we're going to go over the general structure of React code, which is mainly centered around the idea of components. We'll also talk about JSX, which is a huge part of React code. To get started, let's make sure we've loaded up the project we created in the last episode. If you need to relaunch the site, just run npm run dev in your terminal, just like we did in the last episode. Let's start by taking a look at our app.jsx file and dissect it to get a better idea of what's going on. So in our app.jsx file, if we look at the top here, we can see we have all of our imports. So at the top of every React file, we need to import all the items we're going to be using within that file. In our case, we've got a use state function from React, the two logos for both React and V, and then the app CSS file. The reason imports are important is because when we have a React project like this, we're going to have multiple folders with their own files and maybe even folders within folders. The idea of importing is that we can grab exports from certain files by importing them into another file. If we want to use functions from another library like React, we're going to be using this format that we have for the useState import like this. useState is a function from React that's super important to know, but we're not going to dive into it just yet. Now let's look at the actual core of this app.jsx file. You'll see we have a function called app here. And if we follow these squiggly brackets all the way down, you can see this app function that we have encompasses this entire cone chunk all the way up to before this export or export default app at the bottom. This export default app here is just telling our code to export the app so that it can be referenced in other files via an import, which is how we imported our app file into main.jsx. But if we go back up to our function and look at all of this stuff, what actually is this stuff up here? Well, let me explain. So the core of React is the concept of components, which are just blocks of code that represent some aspect of functionality. So what do I mean by this? Well, every function in React is called a component. So in our case, we have a component here that is called app. Each component will generally always be broken into two chunks of code within the function. You have the actual code inside the function as you would with any other function in any other programming language, and then you have the return value. The code you see at the top of the component is just straight up JavaScript. In our case, we have this const count set count equals use state zero, which I will get into detail about in a future episode. But this line here is just JavaScript code. And then we have our actual return value down here within this return statement. If we look carefully, we can see that this return value is actually returning this entire block of code that looks almost just like HTML. So what's this all about? Well, this is probably the most important part of React here. And this is what we call JSX, which stands for JavaScript XML, and it's almost identical to HTML with a few differences. JSX has many of the same tags that HTML has, for instance, div, an A for link, IMG for an image, button for a button, and so forth. I'll go over these differences in just a moment. To have a function be a valid React component, it must return some JSX code. So if you go up here, notice that our return function encompasses every single chunk of the JSX that we have. All of this JSX code here is what our component is going to output. So let's look at our page to show you what I mean. If we look at our React page that we have here on the left-hand side, let's see what our JSX says versus what it actually shows on the page. So if we look at our return statement here within our React app component, we can see first that we have an empty div-like tab at the top here like this that also closes down here at the bottom. So React always needs to return a single div or a single element. So many times you may see an empty div tag surrounding all JSX in a function return. Then what do we have? So we have a div tag here that is comprised of two A tags, which just stands for link, just like HTML. And within each link, we have an image using IMG, just like HTML does as well. The image source for each is just the V logo and the React logo that we actually imported from up top here. And those are just the two logos you see here on the left-hand side, the one on the left being V and the one on the right being React. And then we have some more text like a heading tag that just says, welcome to my React project. A, it's a, a P tag down here that just says we can edit the app.jsx. And then we got, for instance, another P tag down here telling us to click on the logos to just learn more. So this entire page that we're seeing here on the left-hand side all comes from this return value of our app component. So we have what looks like a somewhat normal JavaScript component here, how we define function app. However, when we return JSX is what makes this an actual React component. Just so you can get a better idea of how all this works, let's actually make our own component. So let's go into our File Explorer menu here in Visual Studio Code, right click on this source folder here, and then go ahead and click new file. And then we can make a new file. I'm just gonna name it button.jsx like this. If we had .js instead of .jsx, it would still actually work. However, it's good practice to use JSX instead of JS since that's more formally correct. 
If we go ahead and press enter here, it'll create a new file for us. Inside this button, let's define a function. So we'll say function button like this, and then we'll add our curly brackets. So it's standard practice in React to capitalize the first letter of each component. And React will actually throw you a warning if you don't capitalize the first letter. So I'm gonna to wanna to export this functions to be used on other pages. So before this function word here, I'm just gonna type export. So we have export function button. If we wanted to add some JavaScript functionality, we could add some JavaScript code within our function. But for now, let's just focus on the return value or the JSX. So I'm just gonna go ahead in this function, I'm gonna write return like this. And then to make this a valid React component, we'll wanna return some JSX. Inside this return statement here, let's just make a button tag like this. So I'll write button as that, and it'll autofill the ending tag. And then let's make a space here just to make some more room here. Let's add a paragraph tag with P, and then same thing, if you write the opening tag, it should autofill the closing tag. So inside of this P, let's just write something, let's say testing. Now, how do we actually use this component now that we've made a little something here? So we've already stated that we wanna export this button. So now let's actually go back into our app.jsx file. And at the top, let's just go ahead and go up here, make room right here. I'm gonna write import, and I'm gonna start typing button. And then it should autofill here because it knows that we made a component named button now because it's in our directory. And so if I press enter, it just automatically fills in the import line for us. So by writing this line here, we have effectively imported this button component that we just made a moment ago. So how do we render a component now? So let's actually scroll to the bottom of our JSX in our return statement here. And I'm going to make a space um, below this last P tag. And then to render a component that we've imported, all we need to do is simply type it like we would in any other JSX tag. So what I mean by that is if we wanted to render the button component, all we need to type is button like this. And you wanna make sure we have a closing slash look something like this, and it should highlight gold as so. One thing you wanna make sure of is that the text here matches exactly how it was imported as. So we imported it as this with the capital B and the rest of the letters lowercase. So when we're rendering it, we wanna make sure that it is typed exactly the same in this format. So now if we go ahead and save this file using control S and then save this file here, we now have a button that says testing on our page. So all we've really done is just made a standalone button component, imported it into our app file like this, and then we just render that component using the notation that looks something like this. What's cool about React components is that once you make them, they can be used anywhere and as much as you want. So let's say I wanna actually render three buttons now. I could just type the same thing three times. So I'm just gonna take this, I'm just gonna copy it, and I'm gonna paste it twice like this. And then if we go ahead and control S and save this page, we now have three of the button components that we've just made. Now I mentioned earlier that our app.jsx file actually is a component too, because we're writing it as a function and we are returning JSX. If we go to our main.jsx file, notice that we are actually rendering our app component with the exact same notation that we are rendering our button component with. This notation is the universal notation for rendering components in, and at least in VS Code, it'll always be highlighted yellow if you're doing it properly. Now let's add some JavaScript code to our button component so you can see the real power of React. Of course, it's nice having just JSX in our component to be reused, but alone that's not what makes React good. What makes React good is that we can have functionality within each component in addition to having the JSX. Any JavaScript code that we have inside of our function component should be within the function but outside the return statement, meaning it'll come before the return statement does. Just like any other programming language, we can't have any actual code in a function after the return statement. So let's go ahead and make some space up here inside of our function, but before our return statement. And then let's just make a variable. I'm gonna say let number equals seven. I'll make sure it's actually indented here. So it looks a little more organized. And then if we wanted to actually use our JavaScript code inside of our JSX, all we need to do inside one of these tags here would just be to use curly brackets and then type in the name of our variable, which is just number. So if I did that, it would look something like this. I would use curly brackets and then I would just type in number like this. And now if I were to save this, you can see that in all of our buttons now, we have the number seven. So a very important rule of thumb is that anytime you ever wanna put JavaScript code inside of your JSX, all you need to do is use curly brackets and then the code will know you're about to put in JavaScript and not just some text. Because if we did it without the curly brackets like this, it would just interpret that as the actual word number. So we gotta specify the curly brackets and then it'll know that we're talking about actual JavaScript code. 
Anytime I change this variable now and save it, those changes will be reflected on our web page. Because React is powered by JavaScript, I could have all sorts of JavaScript in each component here. So for instance, if I were to just change a seven to a four and saved it, now all these buttons show four and so on. So you can kind of just mess around with it as you need and JavaScript can easily be injected into JSX. As another example, using JavaScript to power JSX, let's say I just made a new variable. I'm gonna say, let display string like this. And then I'm gonna say an if statement, I'm gonna write if number greater than 10, we're going to, let's say display string equals big number. And then we're just gonna say else, and then we're gonna say display string equals small number. And then inside of our JSX, instead of plugging a number, let's plug in display string like this, and then let's make sure we save this file. And you can now see that it displays small number in each of these buttons. Why? Well, number is equal to seven up here, and seven is less than 10. Therefore, display string gets set to small number. If I were to change this number to 15, for instance, now our components would change and they would instead say big number. The idea here that we're building upon is that we can have all sorts of JavaScript functionality here that we can easily just plug into our JSX to display whatever functionality is being done. One thing that makes React very flexible is that you can have components within components within components basically infinitely. So for example, let's make a new file in our source folder. And I'm just going to call it, let's say button section .jsx like this, and then press enter and make this new file. And so inside of it, we'll make a new component that we can export. So we'll say export function, let's say button section like this, and then obviously use our curly brackets. And then at the top here, let's import the button component we've already made. So I'm gonna type import button, and it should be able to autofill it like this. And then like always with any React component, we need to have a return statement that returns JSX. So I'm gonna write return. And then for now, just so we can have like a singular parent tag, I'm gonna do empty tag. Oops, I'm going to do an empty tag like this. Should autofill it and we'll just make some space like this, just so we have a return statement now with actual JSX inside of it. Now let's say all we wanna do with this button section component is put three buttons inside of it so we don't have to explicitly display three buttons in our app.jsx file. So to do this, we could literally just go in here and render a button like you would any other component. And let's just copy and paste this. So we have three individual buttons here. So this component is basically just a larger component that has three smaller components inside of it. Now let's go into our app.jsx file Let's go up to the top here and then let's go ahead and import the button section component and it should be able to autofill there. We can press enter and it'll autofill just like that. And then instead of at the bottom rendering these three buttons individually, we can just render one whole button section, which will end up being the exact same thing since button section just has three buttons inside of it. So to do that, just like we rendered button, I could render button section as a component like this. And then of course, if we saved our file, we now have a button section component instead of three buttons, but again, it looks identical. If I wanted to clone this section, I could of course just copy and paste it a few times like this. I could just copy it and paste it like that. And then if I were to save it, I would have nine total buttons since our button section has three in each one and we're rendering three of them. So three times three is nine. For now, we'll just go ahead and delete this extra two though so it doesn't look so ugly. Before we end this video, let me just quickly go over a few key differences between HTML and JSX. Like I mentioned earlier, JSX is just React's version of HTML, so they're almost identical in a lot of ways. One of the most obvious differences between the two is that in HTML, when you're calling CSS properties, you normally pass in a class tag. In JSX, however, we call this class name, like for instance in this div here. So in our app.jsx file, any reference to CSS uses class name with the C being lowercase and the N being capitalized. Aside from that, nearly all tags in JSX are almost identical to all tags in HTML, except React uses camel case for everything and doesn't use any sort of hyphens or extra characters. So for example, in HTML to use on click, you would just write on click in all lowercase, but in React, the C in click is capitalized. Another example would be background color. In HTML, background color is background hyphen color, but in React, it is background color with the B being lowercase and the C being capitalized as kind of one string of words together. Basically, anytime you see any HTML property and you wanna use it in JSX, remove all extra spaces or hyphens or underscores, and then apply camel case to the words. 
meaning the first word starts with lowercase, but every word after that starts with uppercase. If you do that, then it should properly be converted from HTML to JSX. If you need extra help using JSX or converting HTML to JSX, check out the JSX documentation on the React website for specific details. And that about wraps up this video. In this video, you learned what a React component is and the general structure of components and their interaction with React's version of HTML, which we just call JSX. In the next video, we'll look at expanding the scope of our components by adding in props. I'll see you in the next one.